we have two choices, and only two choices in this country right now, is to wake up and smell the coffee and know that shit has already hit the fan. Or we resign. All of us go home. We dissolve the government. New elections are held. Let people who care about the fiduciary responsibility of this country come back here. So, Mr. Speaker, we have failed and we have got no business being here. Okay? We have got no business being here. So, Mr. Speaker, I rest my case. 3 a.m. in the morning, I couldn't sleep. I was asking myself, how powerful can a person be such that over 200 members of parliament who are elected by people to come and represent them cannot reason. They cannot use their medulla oblongata. They, they just go in as like sheep. They follow. They cannot ask what are the consequences? What are the unintended consequences? Mr. Speaker, what am I going to be doing in this house? Today, I am mourning a young man from Naro County who was shot outside this parliament. This young man I'll just remember his name. is from a family of the Shieni in Lolonga. I want to go and mourn with them. I want to go and listen. In fact, what we should do, Mr. Speaker, is that if we care about this country, we should be joining the Gen Zs on the streets and fighting for, for their rights. We should be joining the Gen Zs because we have failed. You know? But people don't care. We just want to line our own pockets. We just want to, to appear as if we are important. We are not important. This, those people are the ones who have made us important, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, history has great men and women who non-violently walked across. Gandhi and his supporters walked for 240 days until they won. Mr. Speaker, in the U.S., Martin Luther King, the Great March, they walked... And today we can see results. What stops us from doing that? We sit here and we lie to ourselves that we can be able to make a difference. Yet, nowadays we worship our party leaders. We worship the party line. We cannot remember that the people are the ones who have brought us here. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to plead with my colleagues that it is time that we join the citizen assemblies. It is time that we ask ourselves whether we really understand the phrase that power is transient. We are acting as if we will be in this seat forever, for the rest of our lives. What happened yesterday, Mr. Speaker, sir, should be a wake-up call to the citizens of this country. We should all remember that we are here for a very short time. You know, what shocks me, Mr. Speaker, is that what is this thing that really pushes the president so much when blood is pouring out there to want this bill to be passed. You know, what is it? Instead of us saying, and thank you, Senator Chute, for asking a very good question that all of us are asking. Instead of us fighting corruption, going after corrupt cabinet secretaries, going after corrupt governors, we are here trying to overtax citizens. Mr. Speaker, the population of this country, 70% are Gen Z's. I'm a Gen X. I should be joining them, and I want to join them to be able to go out there and fight for these rights. Because we are not, we don't care, Mr. Speaker. We don't care. We're just busy lining our own pockets. It is sad, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to correct out there. I, re I proposed amendments to the conflict of interest bill because it was barring the whole clan the whole citizens of Kenya from doing business with the government. It was amending legislations which already provide that. It was being engineered by the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission so that they can find many loopholes of getting money. In Maasai, we say, Emala. You know, you have that gourd. Then you decide to open that gourd and the insects goes in when there are so many other avenues. We can easily do the right thing. This parliament can be able to check whether there is any conflict of interest. 
but we should not punish every other citizen. A step, step, step sister-in-law from doing business with the government. Yet, maybe they are doing government, business with government before I come. So, Mr. Speaker, as I conclude, the family of a young man, Erika Yunishini, my prayers are with you. The family of all the departed Gen Zs, your life will not go out in, in vain. Mr. Speaker, the statements which are being propelled out there to feed certain interests are further from the truth. These men and women yesterday, young men and women, were marching in the street to fight for their rights. Unarmed, Mr. Speaker. It is hard out there. So I want to beseech you, my colleagues here. This house is supposed to be a house of union. This house is supposed to be a house that brings sanity. Right now, even if we sit here and burn the midnight oil, there's nothing we can be able to do. Because we are being spoken to there, it gets into the left ear, and it pops out of the right ear. Maybe sometimes because we're enticed. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I plead with my colleagues here that right now everyone of us seated here should search deeply within his soul. Search deeply. Why are you seated where you are, Senator Lilikwe? Why are you seated where you are, Mofaya? You're seated there because, not because you fell from heaven like manna. It is because the citizen of the Rakanidhi brought you here. And you have to listen to them. So, Mr. Speaker, we have two choices, and only two choices in this country right now. Is to wake up and smell the coffee and know that shit has already hit the fan. Or we resign. All of us go home. We dissolve the government. New elections are held. Let people who care about the fiduciary responsibility of this country come back here. So, Mr. Speaker, we have failed and we have got no business being here. Okay? We have got no business being here. So, Mr. Speaker, I rest my case. But I support the motion.